OK, so uh, we'll start. Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for taking the time uh, to view our webinar today. We know everyone is very busy. We're still uh, admitting people as I'm speaking to you, so, uh, but we're running out of time, so we'll start. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of uh, how the webinar will work. Um, we'll start uh, with a brief overview on Ubgad, um, a little bit on our current OGI solutions and product line. We'll uh, go into the QOGI solutions, the IC site. And then uh, we'll start discussing a little bit our the scientific background and how we've implemented the scientific side of the software uh, into a practical, easy to use uh, platform. Uh, and then later on, we'll uh, discuss just very shortly results of a third party test uh, that was conducted and we participated in uh, in Europe. And then uh, for the final part, we'll have a run through the software uh, so everyone can get a look of uh, how easy it is to use uh, and operate. And then uh, at the end, we'll have some some time for our questions and answers. Um, we'd appreciate if you can send them only at the end through the chat because uh, it's difficult for us to see it uh, while we're uh, doing the webinar. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coughing a little bit because we're both uh, still getting over COVID that we had last week, but uh, we'll do the best we can do. Uh, also, I have to let you know that we're recording the webinar as well, so uh, we'll share also the link later on if someone is interested. So. OK, so um, a little bit on, on Ugal in a nutshell. Uh, we're one of the leaders in thermal imaging manufacturers uh, around the world. We're owned by uh, Elbit Systems, and we bring uh, over 40 years experience of uh, field proven technology. Our field of expertise is uh, thermal imaging for the defense market, industrial, which is our department, uh, open frame cameras, aviation, and security. Our current uh, product line uh, in the industrial uh, division is uh, optical gas imaging solutions such as IC Gas 2.0, the IC Gas Mini. Uh, those those two are handheld cameras, and uh, we have two fixed 24/7 cameras as well: the IC Gas 24/7 and the IC Gas 24/7 Pro. And last but not least, we have the IC IC Side QOGI software. So this is our IC Gas 2.0. It's our cooled OGI camera. Uh, very quickly, I'll run through it. Uh, for those of you not, a, not familiar with this product, um, it's a cooled camera. It can detect over 400 uh, VOCs, including methane and CO2 as well. Uh, what's unique about this camera is the patent uh, replaceable spectral filter option. Uh, you're able to replace the filter and use a heavy hydrocarbon filter uh, for better, better VOC detection, mostly in the long range, as well as CO2 filters. Uh, it's a very sensitive camera. In the video, you can see uh, this is an abandoned well out in Pennsylvania. You're able to see a very, very small leak. It can detect 0.30 grams per an hour of methane. Um, and the main, I would say the main feature of this camera is the ability to integrate third-party analyzers uh, 
such as the TVA 2020, the RMLD from Heath Consultants, uh, and third-party Eldar software. We strongly believe that to get uh, an ideal inspection, uh, you can't just use one product, even if it's an OG, a good quality OGI camera. So we have it, we've made it possible to integrate literally any third-party product into this camera via, via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So this is our Icy Gas Mini. The Icy Gas Mini is our uncooled product. Uh, uncooled uh, makes it a lot more cost effective, uh, but it's got its uh, limitations as well. This is a methane only camera. We also have two versions uh, for ammonia and SF6. Um, it's compact, it's very light. We created, uh, we replaced the enhanced mode that we have on the Icy Gas 2.0 with an automatic gas detection mode, which uh, colorizes the screen on top of a uh, visible image. So this helps a little bit uh, with the fact that it's not so sensitive compared to the IC gas 2.0. So those, those are the two technologies, uh, OGI technologies. So we have the cooled and the uncooled. Uh, to summarize, the uncooled is uh, a long wave camera. The sensitivity of it is moderate. Uh, you're able to see medium to large leaks, usually from a closer distance. And then we have uh, the IC gas 2.0, which is the cooled camera uh, in the mid wave, very, very sensitive. Um, and you're not limited to gases, you're able to detect over 400 compounds, also from a further distance. I'm just going to, with your permission, take a quick break just to uh, let some people more, I see that there's a lot of people waiting in the lobby. Let's see. Sorry about that. I'm just going to let everybody in and then we'll go back uh, to the presentation. I still don't know. I've been using this uh, Teams for a while and I still don't know how to automatically let, let everybody in. So anyways, let me go back now to the presentation. Okay, so now uh, this is our IC site uh, QOGI. Uh, this is actually our second generation uh, OGI quantification software. We've taken uh, customer feedback and we've upgraded the software, may, uh, improved the quantification as well as the user friendly experience. Uh, as you can see, it's a very easy to use. We've adapted the software uh, to easily integrate into the inspection workflow. Very easily, that the inspector can come, take it out, uh, connect to the IC gas wirelessly very quickly, and within a couple of minutes, uh, already quantify the leaks. It can be done in real time, or as you can see, it can also be done later on in the office uh, as post analysis. Uh, and then we also have this reporting feature uh, where you can very quickly pull out a report. Uh, it's an award document, you can change the report. And so on. So that's uh, the IC site in a nutshell. And uh, now we're going to go a little bit more uh, deep, a little deeper into the scientific part uh, and show you how we've implemented uh, all the scientific equations into the actual software. Ram, uh, who is uh, the leader of this project, is going to continue from here. Thank you, Ilan. Uh, do you think we need to let some more people in? Because I, let's, let's check just, before I start. So. 
while we are waiting. Just one moment. There we go. So the process of quantification is first to use the IC gas to find a leak. And once you find a leak you want to quantify, you'll need to put the IC gas camera on a tripod and aim it to the leak, then connect it to the tablet and only then start the procedure for quantification, which include a, a wizard of a, six, seven screens, and then you press enter, you click enter, and uh, a minute afterwards you get the results of quantification. So what, what is the quantification, OGI quantification? It's essentially a, a mass flow leak rate uh, a value, which is mass over, uh, over time. It could be pounds per hour, gram per second, gram per hour, but it also can be a uh, volume like uh, standard square feet per minute or standard, uh, not square, cubic feet per minute or standard uh, centimeter, a cubic centimeter per minute. And it also can be just quantification value, uh, just concentration value. So, In essence, what we need to do is to quantify, as you can see in the equation up there, we need to quantify the integrated plane concentration, mass concentration in a plane downwind from the plume of the leak, and time the wind speed, we will get the uh, mass flow leak rate. So there are three components for this quantification. If we get all three right, we will get an accurate quantification. So I will go in this presentation from left to right. So first thing, we have the plane area, and in, or, in order to get these physical dimensions, we will need to know how far away, what is the distance to the leak accurately. So this is a type of input we will ask from the user. Concentration, the main six, seven minutes, I will talk about how we get uniquely the concentration in Ogal in our software. And then the, the last component is the wind speed. And we'll talk about it. Uh, we have an example here of uh, unit analysis, gram per hour. The plane area is meter square. The concentration is gram per cubic meter and times the winds the wind speed in meter per hour, if we cancel all of these uh, units, we get gram per hour. Let's move to the next slide. So, as we go into the analysis of what we need to get in order to get accurate concentration, we need to uh, look at the two layers radiative transfer model and we have two layers we have the layer of the air up to the leak source and we have the gas plume and we have a blockage the background which is the background temperature of what we're looking at so if we're looking here the contrast between a, a, a pixel with gas and pixel without a gas uh, is a function of the radiance of the background uh, uh, block here and the temperature of the air and two transmissions, transmission through the air up to the leak source and the transmission through the gas plume. And uh, let me go. So if we're going in this table from the left to right, the first thing that we need to know is what is the accurate distance into the source. As you can see here, we define it here. We can define it in the software. This is part of the procedure in the software you have to define. We ask the users in the wizard to enter some data and we can see you can enter three meters in uh, 
meter units, but you can also do it in feet and other units. What's the recommendation for uh, distance? Uh, I'll talk it in a second. The recommendation is this software is developed for a short distance up to 10 meters, which is about 30 feet. Uh, let me explain. And if we look at the equation of what is the contrast on a pixel or a group of pixel uh, here on the left, so the range is important uh, through the uh, transmission through the air up to the lake. So in a short distance, we assume this value is one. And the next thing to the right is the delta T. So we need to know what is the temperature of the background here in order to know what the radius of the temperature and we need to know the temperature of the gas, which is the temperature of the air. And if we don't get this value right and the delta T between this background and the gas plume is very small, we can introduce a large error into our quantification process, into our concentration process. So, so I have trouble here with. OK, so. In the software we enter, we ask the user to enter the air temperature here. We can use it in Celsius or Fahrenheit. It's the user choice in the in the in the software. And uh, you can see here it was uh, in the mountains in Utah in the mountains in the in the fall. It was minus seven uh, centigrade. And what we are doing here, we are asking the user to put the air temperature, but the software actually optimizes the air temperature to fit the data that we see from, from the images. So how do we get the concentration length, the CL in PPM meter? This is the most important part of the quantification process. Because if we look at this integrand, integrand here, we have uh, one minus the transmission through the gas times the transmission of the filter. And this is what we call the compound specific spectrum. And this is a function of the concentration times the width of the plume. You can see over here. So this quantification is very much through the absorption coefficient of the gas of the direct gas is very specific to the gas so you can see examples of methane at the top graph over here we calculated the methane spectrum absorption coefficient through this equation times the transmission in different concentration path lengths different cl values and you can see that the methane fill up the filter in a different way than the propane fill. The methane is centered around 3.3 and the propane is a little bit to the longer wavelengths around 3.4. So if we do, if we look at this uh, spectrum, we obviously, obviously we can see there is a different in the response, the specific response of each gas. If we take the integral of this, we will get the curve of the compound specific response. And you can see that the propane curve is very different. First of all, it's not linear. So we cannot ratio and get a response factor in order to transform from one compound to another. We need for each compound to have a specific curve in our software in order to get the calibration curve from concentration from CSR to concentration. So what I need to see over here. Just a second. So this two, this X scale. Here even logarithmic, so we can see that the ratio the response factor at 10,000 ppm meter is about 0.3 where at 100,000 is closer to 0.7. So there is a big change and dependency in concentration in this uh, 
curves. Okay. So we need to know what we are looking at because the IC gas cannot tell us which gas we are looking at. So we need to define in the software the next uh, screen will ask us which compound. And as you can see over here, we can choose from a list of compound and the list is defined by the user. If a user use only methane all the time, so it will pop up only methane or only couple of gases. You have a long list of compounds that you can select eight that you usually use. But what I want to uh, emphasize here that we use only straight chain alkane here because are representing big group of VOCs uh, that we are using. I'll explain it a little bit better. All alkanes between uh, three carbons to eight carbons are absorbed absorbing between 3.3 to 3.55 microns. And here you can see we have, we plotted the absorption coefficient of all of these uh, compounds, straight chain that looks like this, or band chain like two methyl butane over here, that they're all absorbed in the same area. But if you take only the straight chain and you plot from propane through octane, you can see that they have a, a, a special order over here. The larger, the larger the molecule, the more molecular mass that they have, the the more absorption. Uh, the absorption coefficient is larger. The response is better. Sensitivity is better, and the spectrum is moving to the right to the longer wavelengths. So you can see there is an order. So if we look. At uh, we group together C4, C5, C6, and C7, we can see these compounds, band chain and end straight chain alkanes. You can see that they have similar area under the curve. So we represent the uh, compound specific response curve of uh, all of these groups with a similar molecular weight by one straight chain alkane. So we don't need to, all we need to know when we quantify, we don't need to know the specific alkane that we're looking at. We need to know what is the equivalent molecular mass of that uh, alkane. If it's a five carbon, six carbon, we can put the right uh, representative, which is could be for five would be uh, pentane, for six would be hexane. So, we we have this we have developed these uh, compound specific response curve for each compound, and uh, we we found a good way to normalize them theoretically. And the way we tested our our curves, we we measured uh, a methane leak from three meters on this black body over here. You can see we measured it with the RMLD, ETH consultant RMLD, remote methane leak detector, which is a technology tunable diode laser absorption spectroscopy. And this is plotting us the PPM meters directly from, from this instrument in, in 10 Hertz. And we took, you see at this point, we took five pixels around this uh, laser point around the you, there is a green dot over here of the laser, and we plotted a time series, 15 Hertz time series of the RMLD and our uh, quantification of CL using our uh, compound specific response curve. And as you can see, it's follow up and the correlation is very well. Then we average it on one Hertz, one one second, and we plotted this for 50 ppm meter and up values, and we get a slope essentially of one with very high R square. And the theoretical calibration that we do for all other compounds follow the same uh, procedure, so we can extrapolate all our compounds in our software very accurately. So 
the last component to the right of this table was so th this is how we get the accurate concentration. Now we need to get the 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 wind speed. So what we have here, we ask the user to to define the wind speed category if it's calm, moderate, and or strong. And we fine tune this in the software by looking at the movement between frames of the plume from one side of the image to the other side and and evaluate what is the actual wind speed, crosswind wind speed. And so to summarize the procedure from left to right, we, we first we get the CL, volume CL in PPM meter, we convert it through the density, we convert it to mass CL, which is in gram per meter square. We integrated a line of pixels of the CL to get the plane integrated concentration in gram per meter. And then we calculate the wind speed in meter per hour, and then we can get the quantification in gram per meter. You can see the equation, the plane integrated concentration times the wind speed, we get the quantification in gram per hour. What else we do, we can see here in the software that we also calculate the maximum concentration around the leak. And the way we do it, we we trying to estimate what is the plume depth from the image, and then we divide the uh, CL by the plume width or plume depth, and we get the maximum concentration around the leak. Let me. So last October, October last year, we, we participate through one of our distributors in Europe in this project uh, by the European Gas Research Group. And it was blind testing and we had 10 emission uh, measurement technologies participating, not just OGI, also airborne tunable dye laser, dial, tracer release, bagging and some other tunable diode lasers. And it was for methane release from 17 type of releases up to 50 kilograms per hour and up to 75 meters away. And the, the results will be published soon. They are not yet released, but uh, in general, we were very happy with the results, with the preliminary results. It's looked like that overall we were the the best quantification method out of the ogi we had three ogi technologies uh, represented in this study we we got the best results and out of all 10 technologies we were ranked uh, fourth or even third overall and uh, we will make this available when once it gets public So I think we should move now to uh, a demonstration of the software. We'll upload just one moment, we'll upload the software. Just a second. OK, so I'll try to. So this is our software and right now we cannot do a live demonstration. We are not connected to the camera, so we'll go through a post analysis and discuss with you guys how it looks in real time. But here on the left, we can define a, a, by pressing plus over here. We can define a new project and where the data will be saved. And here in the user preference, we can choose our, the unit for for the leak detection. OK, you can we can use we can choose the Fahrenheit uh, or Fahrenheit or Celsius. We can use feet or meters. We can choose gram per hour, kilogram per hour, pounds per hour, uh, standard cubic feet per minute. So we can choose the units that we want the quantification. 
And we can define many other things, but uh, let me go back to the own. So we uploaded the movie of methane leak and we'll go through the process. So once you connect to the camera, we'll give you a, a, an idea how it looks like. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see the plume, but we, we run a movie here. We have people waiting in the lobby <laughs> over here, but what should I do? No, just continue. With the, uh, I, I just want to get rid of this because. Put that, put yeah. OK, it's uh, it's. Interrupting yeah. here, so in case you don't see the plume very well, unlike this, you put uh, the air temperature and you color the plume. And this is help you how to position the 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 tripod and the camera to aim either to bottom of the image or the top of the image depends on on uh, the type of the leak. If the leak is shooting down, you put the circle that I'll show you in a second. There is a circle over here. You can move it up or down and then aim the the camera to the leak. So this is a leak that is going up from the bottom. So we aimed when we collected this data six months ago, we we aimed the ca uh, the camera to the bottom uh, of the image. And then once you start the quantification, after you put the camera, you have a chance to fine tune. You try to put the crosshair very close to, to the leak. You go next, and this is 10 feet, about three meters. 54, about 12 degrees, 54 Fahrenheit. Here you have to choose between uh, emission white plume or absorption black plume. It's obvious the black plume, the, the wall behind it is warmer, so this is an absorption. The gas actually absorb the radiance from the wall behind it. Then you choose the uh, the wind speed. wind speed uh, category. It, it could be we it was moderate in this case. Then you select the compound. In this case, the user add only methane and ethane, but in you can choose. Uh, from a longer list, it's all defined right here. You can select compounds, you have a longer list, you have to click here, only methane and ethane were selected, so that's why. And then you do next, then you can write a comment. You write a comment, something about the leak. And then you press save. And in real time, you collect one minute of data. And and uh, after the one minute of over, you wait another five seconds and the quantification is done. In this case, it will run for 15 seconds. And we'll create you. The last value here is the value of the quantification for the one minute data. Uh, it's around a little bit more than a kilogram per hour. This is the uncertainty, and this is the maximum concentration. This is analysis complete. And here we have. Uh, we have this maximum concentration, which is 46. This is a concentration in a maximum concentration in an arc very close to the leak. It was around 46,000 ppm. This is the maximum concentration that was measured in this minute. So if you want to see, you have a, a button here for the report. You can see the quantification uh, development in one minute. We have 11 determination in one minute. And then we press generate report. Uh, I don't think you can see it right now because it's outside the software. It's open. Uh, it's opened uh, an explorer and you can go to the predefined directory that you chose to to save the data and we'll go directly we'll show you how the report looks like 
So every time you run a report on the same leak, you, it will create you a new file here and it's summarized. You see 1127, 1127, it's really give you the same values that we just did. And this is about the report and uh, what else we can show you here. You can see the, the report here, yeah, mm -hmm. you can see. So also, you, you can, can you go, can you see the monitor? We are, we are looking at the monitor now. We have, no, now you're turning on. No, no, because I, I want to, it's also save the video of the, and, and the data is also safe for post analysis every time you collect it in you real time. Each, time. each time you start a project, you create a file and all the data and the report as well as the videos and images are all saved in, in that file. Okay, so this is, uh, this is about it. Anything See. else you wanted to say? Uh, no, that's generally the overview. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, we'll be happy to uh, to answer. I see that there there are a few questions. Does the accuracy decrease with distance, or is that compensated for the equation? Okay, so we have a question about the accuracy. Once we will go beyond uh, ten meters, the accuracy right now will be decrease with the distance, but we are planning to to enter the air temperature and the humidity and visibility conditions into the software so we can quantify on longer distance and take this to account through the transmission of the foreground air. So right now it's not corrected for distance. Uh, so we we it's not the accuracy we as we go further, we will underestimate uh, more. And it really depends. In in Houston time in the summer, when it's very humid and hot, it will decrease the the the, the underestimation will be more significant, even in shorter distance, when you go to Utah in minus seven centigrade, when the water content in the column is very low. So the accuracy will not decrease much with distance. I guess this is the challenge. This is yeah, the, this, this is the main challenge with with quantifying using OGI because of the distance. But like we said before, what's the ideal? Where do we expect uh, the most accurate results? Three meters? Uh, three to five meters is the optimal. As we go further, depends uh, in what part of the world and what season. Uh, it's really falling it depends on the water content you, uh, uh, in the column between the camera and the and the leak. Okay, so how how to get the accurate distance, air temperature, and so on? Okay, so accurate distance we propose uh, the user to measure it, and you get it. Now the air temperature you try to put the uh, the most accurate you can get from from the internet or you can have a thermometer uh, on site but if you don't get it accurate the software correct and optimize this air temperature once you have a leak measure we, we have a way to extrapolate the relevant air temperature for the analysis it's inside the software Okay, who was ranked number one? I'm assuming you're asking about the uh, the testing. We're not allowed to release the results. They'll be released later on. But as Ram mentioned, out of the QOGI, uh, we're happy to say that we ranked first uh, and very close to other alternative uh, uh, quantification methods. We'll be happy to share the results with everyone once uh, once it's released. You know when the paper comparing techniques will be published, one institution is behind the report. Uh, like we said, it's uh, going to be released, should be released soon. We'll be happy to share it. And the institution was the European Gas Research Institute. Okay, how far 
do you think the quantification approach with the Ogal camera is from being able to be used for methane reporting for of fugitive, fugitive leaks in a similar fashion to manual bagging type approaches? But, but uh, OK, let me answer this. Uh, the OGI, all OGI perform better than the bagging approach. All OGI technologies and ours were far better than the bagging approach. So the bagging approach failed miserably in, in, in this test. So, so. Okay, there's another part. Uh, so I think we are very close, but it really depends. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what going to be at the US, at the EPA, but we are working uh, with all regulatory agencies around the world to try to promote it with our with our competitors. Okay, thinking ahead to OGMP level four and the use of a reliable, reasonably accurate quantification capable camera will material save site time, efforts costs. It will need to clarify as to when the quantification works well and does not work. For example, swirling wind and sufficient temperature differential. OK, so. We, we are developing a, a method. Inside the software that will tell you if the number that it promote is is a, of high quality or low quality. So if you look back at the equations that I showed you earlier, the delta T, when you have a small delta T, it's not just the detection is poor, but also the quantification, because it's very sensitive to the air temperature determination. And we, distance and wind speed surely are affecting. So if you go on the table, each, each of these columns in the table as an effect on accuracy. If one of them is is compromised, we we have a we have a decrease of accuracy. So, but the main thing is to have enough enough pixels that have a five degrees or above delta T between the background temperature and the gas plume temperature, and once we have this uh, delta T, we are much more accurate in situation that we have only a couple of degrees uh, temperature difference. Okay, so algorithm itself looking specific compound and uh, inspector example methane. So there are no need to multiply results for volume percentage of methane in the gas plume observed. OK, so. What I recommend in this case, if you, if you know. If you know the proportion of methane in the gas plume. I would calculate and, and the rest of the VOCs, if you know the composition, try to to get what is the equivalent molecular mass and then choose if you get something around propane 44 gram per mole for for the weighted average between the percentage or you get something much heavier. You choose the right alkane in the software to do the quantification. And then you can uh, you you get you get the right quantification for the 100 percent and then you can assume what is the percentage of that is methane by volume or by mass depends what kind of data you have. So I'm not sure if I answered the question, but it's very important if you quantify it only by methane and it's only 20 percent methane or 50 percent methane. Uh, you you find a way. Uh, to to correct for it because it will the result will not be the result is 100 percent. Of the compound or the equivalent molecular mass, so. Let, let, let me try to explain it. If you have 50% methane and 50% propane, the equivalent molecular mass will be around 30 gram. So I, I will analyze it as ethane because it's something in the middle. 
And then when I get how many gram of total per hour I have of the total, I will try to to derive from that how much methane I have in 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 this quantification. But you need to do you need to choose the the weighted average uh, compound because you can run it only as one compound, not as a mixture. Oh, very close to other alternatives. How close compared to the other? Can we disclose or we're not allowed to disclose? What? In the test time. I think that we're not allowed yet to disclose how close we were to other alternatives. Other alternatives? Well, I'm not sure. You mentioned that we're very close. We came fourth in the yeah. test time. No. So it's not asking how close. We'll have to wait for the yeah. published results. We we really we would we we don't mind sharing the information. We're just not allowed to share the information right now, but uh, we'll be happy to share it once the results are uh, released. Can you describe how the user changes the filters? Uh, can the filters be changed in the field? You're, I'm assuming you're talking about the camera filters. Yes, very easily. Uh, it comes with a key. It takes about one minute to do it. We have a video actually on our website. If you go to our website and uh, go to the ICDS product page, we have a video there explaining how easily it's done. Uh, very, very quickly to do it. Was, was it a timed bagging approach or something like high flow? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, I think it's about the high flow. Can you compare the contrast of gun with fixed base sensor technology such as Molex? Uh, I'm not sure what Molex is, but it, you're talking about point monitors. The question is, is uh, Molex will measure concentration, I think. Fixed sensors are measuring concentration, so it depends on the distribution the heights, but if we want to quantify emissions, we need to get, anyhow, we need to get the uh, plane integrated concentration and time the wind speed. This is the only way we we can get a uh, concentration, either, either by doing inverse dispersion modeling, but uh, essentially it's always taking concentration over a plane or in multiple points and back calculate what is the emission rate either directly by integrating the plane time the wind speed or doing inverse dispersion modeling. But the most direct, like the dial and 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 uh, other method, differential absorption LIDAR, that give you the most accurate uh, emissions, they are using very similar approach to what we're using inside the OGI. We, we actually, they are based, instead of point concentration, we are based it on line concentration, on product of, of concentration time length. And this is have much better uh, representation of cross section through the plumes. That's why this open path and OGI and dial technologies are superior in, in getting uh, accurate emissions. The other accurate emission method was the tracer release, which uh, use, uh, you release another gas from, from the source and measure this gas and the target gas in a, in a different, in a long distance downwind. And by ratioing the concentration, you can figure out what was the unknown emission rate because you release the gas in a known emission rate. But, but, this is uh, I recommend looking at other methods. Uh, number ten at EPA, they have a discussion how to quantify uh, open uh, open sources of fugitive emission sources. Okay, it is not quite clear if wind speed is estimated by image analysis or entering manually. What if operator observes plume with a wind speed of zero? 
uh, will the results be zero grams per an hour? Okay, so the the software will calculate the wind speed. If there will be zero movement, you will not see the the gas. The gas is is moving outside the source into the air, so there is some movement, and we can analyze it down to very slow uh, movement, and then probably we'll get a much lower emission rate if we have a very low flow, but zero is never going to be the case. Okay, uh, continuing the previous question. Um, was fixed was fixed point based monitors included in the study? Yeah, through the uh, for example, the tracer release. So we, they have fixed measuring of two gas, one of the non emission, one of the target emissions and the by ratio they they. They uh, figure out what the emission is. OK, and last uh, I think this is the last question. We may we may analyze gasoline leaking in a gasoline station. Please keep us advised which gas to choose in the future. Uh, it depends on the country, but typically it's between butane and pentane. Gasoline is uh, between butane and pentane, between uh, four carbons or five carbons. Okay, another couple of questions came in. We'll answer them really quickly. Have you done any preliminary evaluations on the proposed DP Appendix K operating envelope uh, for the IC gas? Um, yes. Uh, we, we, we sent our comments to that, but it did not talk about quantification. It only talked about detection. detection. Um, and then John uh, asks, better better to say plume speed versus wind speed uh, when atmosphere conditions are calm. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. But but uh, in very low wind speeds, it's taking over. Even less than one meter per second wind speed, the wind speed is taking over. OK, thank you uh, for all the questions. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time. Please feel, feel free to contact us anytime if you have further questions, uh, if you like a personal demo, if you have any comments. Uh, we'll be happy to get your feedback, and we'll send you also an email uh, in the next couple of days with the recording. Thank you, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you.